It is now my pleasure to introduce our reputable guest speaker who is passionate in helping um, business owners to attain full potential of their organization's growth and helping them to 10 times their ROI. And uh, he has an ironclad background in business development in sales and marketing, and also a man behind of the best-selling and highly credible book titled Seven Positivity Poem, a master of success and an action man and propagator of solution selling. He is also the CEO of the longest link tree in the world. Please welcome Mr. Mike Armstrong. Take it away. Hello. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that introduction. And uh, it was uh, fascinating listening to uh, Angela as well, because a lot of what Angela uh, went into it dovetails really well with what I've got to say. So that's a really good uh, pairing uh, for, for speaking there. I think Angela was going into the, the, the detail of what I'm going to go into more, the overview, the strategy of, of why to use those things, if you like. So uh, good dovetail in there. So um, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Armstrong. I'm going to teach you how to sort of 10x your life, 10x your business. Uh, you don't actually just have to 10x your business or your life. You can 20 exit. You can infinity exit. You can grow as big as you go, as you need to go, as big as the market will allow you, and as big as your ambition uh, allows you as well. So there's not no you haven't got to put a number on it, um, and you haven't actually got to go 10x or 20x. You could just double or triple or quadruple your business. It's really down to living life on your terms and running your business your way. So um, yeah, uh, in order to have a successful life and a successful business. I believe you've got to have a well-balanced life. I'm a Libra in any way, so everything I do is well-balanced. And so you have to look after yourself first because without you looking after you, then you can't grow your business. So um, at the start of the pandemic, I, I was hitting a period of really good performance and really um, uh, high output and really high levels of happiness and success and productivity. And that got me into thinking, well, why is this happening? Because I'm always happy. I'm always pr productive and successful. But why am I really hitting some really you know, amazing numbers? And uh, for me, it was about um, the fact that uh, I was actually exercising a lot more uh, because of the pandemic. I was thinking, well, if ever there's a, a chance to uh, to get fit and to get healthy, as well as a killer virus on the loose. So rather than do what most people do and uh, sat close to their fridge eating all day, I decided to use my one hour of uh, use it or lose it exercise and get out and exercise every day. I also was exercising inside every day um i was also um getting things done that i've always wanted to do because i had the extra time to do it um because lockdown allowed you extra time so i was writing books and writing poetry and starting a podcast and getting on clubhouse and all these sort of things so i was being really really productive and uh, i started analyzing why. why 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 am i being super productive when you know normally i'm just productive and uh, I sat down and I wrote down all of the different things that I changed in my life uh, because of lockdown and the start of the pandemic. And basically, I put that into a formula and uh, I call it the smart happiness formula. Uh, it's also a productivity formula because the happier we are, the more productive we are. So if you can get yourself happy and productive, then you're well in a position to become successful in life at whatever it is that you do. So I'm just going to break down my smart happiness formula and tell you a little bit about that. And then I'm going to move into how you can then uh, implement uh, some, some um, principles of success in your business in order to grow your business. But first of all, we'll start with yourself. So my SMART uh, happiness formula, the SMART is an acronym and it stands for sleep, meditation or mindfulness, ability to perform, random acts of kindness and targets. And, uh, and if you basically live a life where you do those things every day, then I believe you can become happier and more productive than you are now. So I think most people do a combination, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent of this formula naturally or successful people tend to anyway. Uh, but I believe that by doing the extra 20, 30, 40 percent you may be missing now, you can actually compound affect your happiness because you know it's the it's the compound uh, nature of of doing it all together uh, each of the uh, aspects of the formula uh, are scientifically proven if you like to uh, increase your happiness um, uh, but if you do them all together then you're going to super exceed your happiness uh, which is going to have a knock-on effect of productivity uh, and that'll get you on the road to success so sleep uh, I've always been successful in life and I've always been high energy 
And a lot of people always um, can't believe how much energy I have, but I always make sure I sleep well. Just like your iPhone, if it gets used a lot, you need to put it on charge, let it rest and let it recover. And so that's what sleep's like for your body. And so I always recommend seven to eight hours of sleep a night. I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there trying to push their body and, and say, oh, I can get by on four or five hours. I don't think it's actually a benefit doing that. I think long term, it doesn't help your health. And also, I think you're not as productive in the time that you are awake than you would be if you slept better and actually just got more productive in the times that you're awake and you're applying yourself. So make sure you sleep well. And it's scientifically proven that sleep, you know, helps you, you know, in lots of different ways. And it makes you feel happy if you've had plenty of it and uh, not so happy and grumpy if you haven't. So then um, I discovered meditation at the start of lockdown. I, I met a friend uh, online networking. She taught me meditation. Luckily, I've always done a bit of mindfulness anyway. So I've always um, I like to go for a walk in nature or uh, ride a bike around a lake or something like that and uh, contemplate you know i'm a big contemplator a big dreamer and so mindfulness is is good and meditation's good as well and i find if you can do at least 30 minutes of one or the other each day then that helps your brain reset it helps you get clarity of thought and it allows you to um you know to to, to focus on the right areas and be happy in yourself and, and, and in your mind because you've had that rest. So uh, I recommend at least 30 minutes of meditation or mindfulness per day. Uh, and then you've got to look after your ability to perform. So your ability to perform, you know, how you can keep going is all down to your energy and your, your body, your biology. So you look after your ability to perform by exercising at least 30 minutes a day, um, by having a well-balanced nutritional diet, you know, you can't put crap into your body and expect you not to have some negative effects from it. So I don't do caffeine. You know, I drink water. Um, I try to stay off sugar and salt and all that. I don't buy foods with them in. I don't add them to my food. I try and go, you know, brown on rice and pasta and bread and that sort of stuff rather than the whites because I find it's not so stodgy. So just eating a well-balanced nutritional diet is obviously going to make you feel better and make you happier because you're not putting uh, horrible substances into your body that's going to have a negative effect so i highly recommend that and then you need to keep yourself well hydrated especially obviously if you're regularly exercising but just even if you're not you need to be well hydrated because the body is made up mostly of water and you need to make sure that your water intake is good and that you're healthy and fit because of the hydration in your body so that's uh, uh, water exercise and nutrition which looks after your ability to perform and then um, because of the pandemic, uh, I decided a lot of people out there need help at the moment. So I decided to do um, random acts of kindness and just be kind in general. Now, I'm always kind anyway. I like helping people, but I sort of like 10x, 100x my levels. And so I was just helping people because lots of people needed help. Uh, I'm a carer as well. So, you know, I've done some caring for family members and I just help people with knowledge, information, advice. Also, I'm on social media all the time. So I help people with like uh, positive comments, positive engagement, resharing their posts, all that sort of stuff. And I found the more, well, you know, when you help somebody, um, it's biologically proven that there's a chemical release of oxytocin in your body. And oxytocin is like the body's natural high. It makes you feel happy. So the more you, you do, the happier you, you get. So, you know, at the end of the day, there's no reason why you can't be kind to people. And it actually helps you at the same time. So it's like a win-win scenario. So I, I actually discovered that, you know, by helping people more and more during the pandemic, uh, I actually increased my levels of oxytocin and that increased my uh, levels of happiness and increased my levels of productivity. So just be kind is no reason why not to. So um, and there's plenty of reasons why to do it. So do it. Uh, so that's the, the 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 R in my smart formula. And that leaves me on to T. Now, T is all about targets. I'm very target orientated. I think human beings are in general. They like to achieve. They like to, you know, hit some some levels of success or um, of, of activities, etc. Um, so I'm big into goal setting. You know, I, I set long term goals, big, huge long term goals that I know. Uh, I'm going to have to develop into a person capable of achieving and I'm going to have to be persistent and consistent and focused on achieving those big goals. Then I set medium goals, which are um, you know stepping stones to the big goals. So things you know you need to achieve in order to achieve the big goals. 
and then you set a daily routine, a daily routine of activities and uh, um, you know targets, things you need to achieve each day to get yourself closer to those medium goals, which ultimately you know will help you to achieve the big goals. So you know I got very sort of target orientated and goal orientated, and I was starting to. Uh, tick off these goals, big lifetime goals. I'm starting to tick them off off my list at the start of the pandemic, and I, and, and obviously you know ticking off life goals and big goals and big achievements gives you a lot of energy and enthusiasm to keep creating and, and making new goals, new targets and, and, and new achievements. So you know, and that is something then which you feel is you're in momentum. The happiness seeks into your body. And it's a great way of be, becoming, you know, happier and focused and more productive. So that's the SMART happiness formula. I'll just repeat it again for you. The S in SMART is for sleep. The M for mindfulness or meditation. The A for ability to perform. The R for random acts of kindness. And the T for targets, target setting and target achievement. So um, that's the SMART happiness formula. And I believe if you do that every day, and it will make you happier and more productive than you are now. And if you're doing most of it, then just do the little bit of top up and it will have the compound effect. So that's my smart happiness formula. That led me then on to um, my success formula, because a big part of happiness for me is achievement, is success. You know, I've always achieved. I've always been a winner. I've always liked winning and I've liked achieving things and ticking goals and off and getting things done in my life. So um, so the natural progression was to think about, OK, if I'm doing this goals, et cetera, and I like success, then, you know, what's the formula to success? What, you know, what makes you successful? So my, my brain started thinking about, you know, all the things I've done in my life, which have contributed to my success and to being successful. And so then I come up with uh, seven key pillars of success, uh, and I call this the STREAMS success formula. Again, it's another acronym, and the STREAMS stands for systems, technology, relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales. And unlike the SMART happiness formula, which is a daily routine, this is more a lifetime routine, really, because success, you know, takes a lifetime. It's very rare that you become an overnight sensation. It can happen, and it does, but it's very rare. So you're actually much more likely, um, you're much more likely to um, to need to invest in time and patience in order to become successful in life. So uh, for me, the seven pillars of success, as I say, are systems, technology, relationships, efficiency action marketing and sales and that's why this dovetails well with what uh, angela was talking about because you know she was talking about some of the tools that you use which are you know some of the systems some of the technologies etc some of the ways of getting efficiency into your business you know some of the actions you need to take some of the marketing and sales tools that you can use to actually help grow your business in order to be seen as successful by the wider group so let's tackle them individually so systems ultimately if you can systemize your business if you can um you know do a lot of what you do in autopilot or your staff are doing it in autopilot and actually everything that you do in your business is catalogued and systemized then your business has more value you know if you want to sell it etc because someone can take over the systems um but also you you actually you gain massive efficiencies and, 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 and increased productivity because everything becomes easy and quick to do because it's systemized. So, you know, using automated systems and using, you know, accounting systems and software and, you know, processes, sales processes, funnel processes, all these things that systemize the way you do things, you know, automatic calendars and, and everything. The more you can systemize everything that you do, the more time you'll have to do other stuff. So that's important. So keep improving and, and working on and making more efficient the systems that you use. Uh, to help you do that, you need to use technology. So there's a lot of businesses out there who shun technology. They still still do things the old way. But technology is created to actually improve efficiency, increase, increase speed, you know, replace people, all this sort of stuff. So if you're not utilizing the latest technology for your sector and for your industry, 
then um, basically you're not taking advantage of the things, the tools that have been created to make your life easier, to save you money, to save you staff numbers, to, to make your productivity increase. So you're not taking advantage of those things. And if you're competing in a, a, an open marketplace like most people are with other people and they're using those things, then you're having a, a, you're not having the competitor advantage that these tools are giving you, which means you're going to be falling behind them and therefore deemed to the outside world as probably not as successful as some of those other businesses and other people, etc. So you need to incorporate technology. You need to make sure that you're a lifelong learner and in keeping up to date with the regular technologies and softwares and systems that are relevant to you and your business and your marketplace, et cetera. So, um, so that's the technology. Um, I myself once worked in a, a fintech startup business, um, which grew from no turnover to 25 million turnover in 10 years, up to 125 million turnover in 20 years. I grew a corporate uh, telesales team from seven people doing 300,000 to a department of 17 people doing 5.7 million, which is 20 times growth. And that was in eight years. And it was all down to technology, you know, technology and efficiencies and, 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 and active sales and marketing, which is the end of my stream. So I'll cover those in a bit. But um, yeah, you know, so, so systems, technology and efficiency is going to help you grow rapid, especially, you know, in a modern tech world. Um, so after you've got your systems and your technology, you need to concentrate on your relationships. So business is about uh, teamwork. It's about having the right uh, customers, the right partners, the right staff, the right uh, people in your business, really. So it's all about people. It's all about relationship building. And the more um, solid relationships you have in life and in business, the happier and the, the better your life will be. So it's all about building and forging great relationships with people and looking after the people who look after you. And, uh, and and that way, then you you know every top entrepreneur on the planet will tell you that they owe it all down to the people. It's all about the people they surround themselves with, the people they have in their business, you know, their partners, uh, their clients, and customers, whatever. It's all about people. It's a people business. Business and life is a people sport, and the more relationships you build, the better your business will be, and the more successful you'll be. So you know. Life is about, you know, to be successful in life, you need to keep investing and building in those relationships. And the more you invest in and build in those relationships and quality relationships, and the more you can leverage those relationships in order to help you grow your business, the more uh, successful you're going to be in business and in life. So that's the R of streams. Then we've got E for efficiency. So again, you should be constantly looking at everything that you do and working out how more efficiently you could do it. Because if you can shave off a couple of seconds here, a couple of minutes there on all of the activities you do every day, then you can actually find yourself more time in the day. So a lot of people think money is the most important asset on the planet, but it's not. It's time because it doesn't matter how rich you are or who you are. You can never make more time, but you can always make more money. So uh, time is the most important, valuable asset on the planet. And if you can work out how to do everything you do in less time, it'll give you more time to do other things that you need to do. And uh, that will make you more successful because you'll be able to compete better against the people you're competing against because you've got more time than they have. So efficiency is key and using systems and technology will help you with efficiency. And if you can't do it yourself, then your relationships, you know, leverage your relationships to help you improve your systems and your technology and your efficiency. And then you'll be able to improve your business and become more successful. And then if you can use those systems, that technology, the people and the efficiency yeah, to give yourself more time, then it's about taking massive action because, you know, you can't be successful without taking the action. So a lot of people um, listen to Think and Grow Rich and Manifestation and all the rest of that, which is fantastic. You've got to think about it and manifest it and want it first, but you're not going to achieve anything in life unless you take some massive action. So give yourself some extra time in your day, in your week, in your month, in your year, because of your technology, your systems, and your efficiency, and take some massive action. Do lots of activities. Do the activities that's going to help grow your business, make an impact, bring more clients in, et cetera, et cetera. And make sure you're doing massive action in the area that's going to help you to grow. So that's important to identify those areas first, and then you need to take that massive action in order to get to where you want to get to. So then that's the uh, stream, uh, S-T-R-E-A part of streams. 
the last two bits then, which is my core key area, because I'm a sales and marketing specialist, the last two bits are marketing and sales. And ultimately, success is whatever we deem it to be in life. But for us to be seen as successful, we have to be seen by the rest of the world, the marketplace, the sector, the industry, other people. You know, there's other measurements of success other than our, our own. And a lot of that is down to marketing and sales, because if you're not known for for what you do, you could be the best, you know, plumber, business service provider, expo company on the planet. You could be the best at whatever it is that you do, but unless other people know you as being the best, then you're not really being deemed as successful. And that's all down to your marketing and your sales. So, you know, I, I encourage people if they're going to um, increase more time in their day through efficiency, and then they're going to take massive action, then take it in the area of marketing and sales. Take it in the area that's going to actually get you to grow your business through customer acquisition and client acquisition and partnerships and affiliations and, you know, all that sort of uh, uh, stuff. And that's how you're going to grow your business, you know, opening up another offices and branches and operating in new online stores and whatever, you know, being more active with your marketing and your sales is how successful businesses grow. So, um, so then that's the streams formula. And it's not a daily routine. It's not a, a monthly or a, a, an annual routine. It's a lifetime routine. If you can invest, if you imagine you've got seven pots and uh, you need to, you know, invest in those pots constantly and concentrate on whichever areas you're weakest at, build those areas up uh, or outsource them or get partners to replace you in, in those areas, etc. And then the areas you, you want to develop and grow on, just constantly be learning. You've got to be a lifelong learner, get some mentors, listen to the best people in the world in those particular fields or those particular areas. So you can't just say, oh, I'm no good at sales or I'm no good at marketing or I don't like technology or you can't just write things off. You have to take these things on board. You have to learn about them. You have to improve them. Even if you're not going to do sales yourself, even if you're not going to do marketing yourself, you need to be aware of what's going on so you can employ the right salespeople, the right marketing people, et cetera. So um, it's not about, you know, just going, oh, that's somebody else's domain or whatever. It's about learning as much as you can in the seven areas, the seven core pillars of success, systems, technology, relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales. Keep growing those seven areas. Keep working on them for constantly, you know? Google search and find out tips and advice on different aspects of that, yeah? What are the best CRM systems? What are the best automation systems? What are the best uh, marketing strategies online, offline? What's the best sales strategies? What's the best negotiation techniques? Constantly develop and learn these skills and these areas um, of business, and you'll become a better business person and your business will become more successful because the more you grow and the more you develop, the more you'll be able to grow and develop your business. It's as simple as that. So, um, you know, I personally listen to some of the best people on the planet in all of these areas in order to grow and develop myself. I've been in sales and marketing for 34 years, but I, I still got billions of things to learn constantly. So, you know, it doesn't matter how much you think you know a subject. There's always more coming. Technology is always developing. Innovations are always happening. So you have to keep up with the times. You have to move with, 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 you know, the technology and you have to, you know, keep with the the, the, the principles that, that may develop. Like, for example, you know, there's different ways of communicating with millennials now than there was with Generation Xs and, and baby boomers, et cetera. So you know, the people are always changing. The world is always spinning and technology is always improving and the life is always developing on. And so you're either developing with it or you're moving away and becoming uh, you know, disconnected from it, you know, so think about that and constantly be working on yourself. So that's my streams success formula. And um, you can have the stream success formula without the smart happiness formula. But you know, you can be very successful in business and die early because you're not looking after yourself. Yeah. But if you actually combine the two together, so you have a, a happiness formula, which allows you to be more productive and healthy, and you combine it with your streams success formula, then I've got uh, what I call an elite business performance formula. I call it uh, smart streams. Yeah. And the smart streams will put you in full flow, you know, because if you're looking after your body, yourself, your health, yeah, and you're, you're improving your skill set in business and becoming more and more successful, then, you know, ultimately you're going to hit uh, an autopilot at some point. You're going to be in 
full flow. And then once you're in a full flow state and you're able to just bat things off and overcome problems and just make things happen because everything in your life is just in a sweet spot, then that is how you will build success and that's how you will become successful or whatever it is that you do. So, um, so yeah, so hit the smart happiness formula, hit the stream success formula, do it consistently together for a long period of time and you will become successful at whatever it is that you do. And I really 100% believe in that. There's two things that you need to do to help you along the way. And that is you need to um, you need to work on your mindset because your mindset is everything. If you believe you can do it, you will do it. And if you don't believe you do it, you won't do it. So you've got to work on your, your, your mindset and make sure that that is uh, up to speed. And also you need to build resilience. You need to build resilience because, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing in life. If you get, you know, knocked out of the way by obstacles and you can't overcome those obstacles, then you're not going to get to the destination you want to get to. So work on your mindset, make sure you're willing to adapt and develop and grow and, uh, you know, build your resilience up so that no matter what gets in your way, you can find a way of sidestepping it, you know, jumping over it, blowing it up, doing whatever you need to do to get it out of your way. And if you can keep uh, patient and you keep uh, persistent and you keep consistent at constantly developing and working you know, to become the best at whatever it is that you're doing, then you will become the best or you'll become, you'll, you'll get up there towards the higher echelons of your industry and your sector, because a lot of people will fall by the wayside and a lot of people won't stick to it. So all you've got to do is stick to it and keep developing and growing and you will get to the front of the queue eventually. So um, yeah, that's pretty much my um, happiness and success formulas. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, either in the, the, the chat or, or uh, via voice and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, doesn't seem to be any questions, which is uh, good. Real clear. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, I think, um, I think that's it then. If uh, if uh, there's no other questions, um... oh, I see. Thank you so much for um, the inspiring talk, uh, Mike. Thank you for sharing that, and uh, I hope it will help uh, the expectators or our our um, our guests and uh, get something about it. And hopefully, um, it will. Uh, lead them to the, their organization's growth. And uh, again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that wraps up our morning on behalf of Digital Age Expo. Thank you all for making time and your busy schedule to join us here this morning. I wish you all a pleasant day and stay safe. Have a good one. Thank you, Mike, again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.